Let's continue working with the partition functions that contribute to the ensemble partition function for an ideal monatomic gas. Remember that we're working with an atomic system, and as a result, there are only two contributors to the energy, the translational component and the electronic component. We just finished up with the translational, so in this lecture, let's focus on the electronic contribution to the energy. We'll start with the usual expression for a partition function, but in this case, I want to sum over levels as opposed to states, and that's dictated by the degeneracies that may arise in electronic energy levels. And in that case, I'll have the electronic partition function, a sum over levels, the degeneracy of the level, e to the minus beta, the energy of that level. So epsilon being used to indicate the energy, as always and g to indicate the degeneracy. So we can choose to set the ground state electronic energy as the zero of energy. So thermodynamics is essentially always about changes in properties, changes in energy, changes in enthalpy. And as a result, where you set zero is an arbitrary choice. But some zeros are more convenient for mathematical purposes than others. And so we're going to adopt the convention for this system that the zero of energy is the ground electronic state energy. And in that case, the electronic partition function would be written, well, as we sum over the first level, it's the degeneracy of the ground state times e to the minus beta times zero. So that'll just be one. And so the first term in the partition function is just the ground state degeneracy. The second term will be the degeneracy of the second state. We could call that the first excited state times the exponential of minus beta times its energy relative to the ground state energy. Right? So it's actually the energy separation between the first excited state and the ground state. Notice that unlike the translational partition function, there's no dependence on volume here. Atoms have the same electronic state energies, whether they're in a big volume or a small volume. So the only thing that this partition function depends on is temperature, because temperature appears in beta. Beta is 1 over kT. Well, the good news is, unlike the translational partition function, where we needed to do a, a little bit of mathematical manipulation to evaluate an infinite sum, the electronic partition function is a sum which typically converges extremely rapidly. So we only need to evaluate the first few terms, and at that stage, all the remaining terms make negligible contribution. Indeed, often we only need to consider the first one or two terms in the series, namely the degeneracy of the ground state, perhaps the first excited state, perhaps the second excited state, and, and so on. In any case, they rapidly become smaller as we consider more terms. And just as a general rule to remember, something always to bear in mind when thinking about these things, at room temperature, roughly 300 Kelvin, one only needs to keep terms in a partition function expansion where the energy of the term is somewhere below about 1,000 wave numbers. All right, so at that stage, if I plug in a, a relative energy to the ground state of 1,000 wave numbers, I'll get e to the minus beta times 1,000 wave numbers, so I would express Boltzmann's constant and the necessary wave number-like units, and you discover it makes just, just about 1% worth of difference. All right, and as you go to higher and higher energies, you will finally drop below this roughly 1% con contribution, and that's not really much of a contribution, so you can cut it off there effectively. And so if we look at actual electronic energy levels, and here's a table for a few gases, and we looked at some of these uh, in actually the very first week, and so tabulated are hydrogen and helium and lithium and fluorine. And what you generally find is, there's some trends here, if you look at the noble gas atoms, so here's helium, that's a noble gas. Its first excited state is 160,000 wave numbers above the ground state. So I said at, at room temperature, you only needed to go up about, uh, what did we say? We should look back at the last slide, about 1,000 wave numbers. But here, 
it's a hundred thousand plus wave numbers. So that first excited state makes no contribution whatsoever. If we look at alkali metal atoms, so that's lithium for example, first state roughly 15,000 wave numbers above the ground state. No contribution at room temperature. Finally, the halogen atoms, it does turn out that there is a first excited state at 404 wave numbers above the ground state. That comes from something known as the spin orbit splitting in the fluorine atom. We don't need to worry about the quantum mechanical basis for that, but it does create a relatively low-lying first excited state. So in that case, we might look at the second state, but now the second state is up at 100,000 plus wave numbers, so much too high in energy to matter. So we would only keep the first, and now the second term would be useful for quantitative accuracy. And so, in fact, I'll let you spend a moment here to work out what the contribution to the partition function is for the first excited state in the fluorine atom at a particular temperature. So really, the electronic partition function is the simplest partition function, because instead of a sum of many terms, we typically really only need to keep one, or at most, two terms. And that will generally be true as long as we're not dealing with metals and uh, other special systems where low-lying excited states may, may prevail. But we're not going to see any of those as we move forward and talk about gases. Hence, we've got the electronic partition function can be approximated as degeneracy of the ground state plus degeneracy of the first excited state exponential of minus beta times that excited state's relative energy relative to the ground state. However, we should keep in mind, even though we're going to make use of this approximation in most of our work, if you did go to extremely high temperatures, like the surface of the sun, interesting chemistry might happen there, uh, or very small values of excited state energies, which can happen in metals, then additional terms could contribute. And so, if in working with this particular approximation, you were to find that the magnitude of this second term was substantially larger than a percent or so, you'd likely want to look at the third term and be sure it could, in fact, be neglected. In order to uh, find those terms, incidentally, certainly for atomic energy levels, we're talking about an atomic ideal gas here, one can find all the atoms, spectroscopic data, the electronic energy levels tabulated to many, many digits, as you saw in a table a, a few slides ago. And for molecular calculations, uh, sometimes one can find tabulated data, and one can also resort to high-level quantum chemical calculations where they're needed, but we won't be exploring that in this course. We are, though, at a stage where we can finally put together the ensemble partition function. We've got the two components we need. And so, given that this is the translational partition function derived from particle-in-a-box energy levels, and this is the electronic partition function derived from the analysis we just went through, then the ensemble partition function can be written as a product of this times this, all raised to the nth power, where n is the number of atoms, and divided by n factorial. So now that we've actually got an explicit form for the full ensemble partition function, in the next lecture, we'll take a look at using that ensemble partition function in order to make predictions of properties of macroscopic amounts of a monatomic ideal gas.